right, so what we have here is 2002 Wheezy, and we got The Rise and Fall of Young Money. It's a small documentary. It's like 19 minutes long. It's by Rapaholic, so I'm assuming like it's gonna be pretty informative. Some good ass material. I'm gonna tune in. Y'all don't tune in. Young Money Entertainment, my own thing. The new thing, man. How that your boy? We taking over. I got this rapper from Canada. His name is Drake. He's real good. He's actor and all that. He's in the press. He hired. They're all better than me. That's why I came on first. They all gonna love me. But once they come out, y'all gonna forget about me. I got my man Lil Chucky. I Absolutely key. Beautiful. Miss Chanel. We got all the mother niggas And last but not least, Drake. Drizzard. Six years later. Lil Wayne has established a label called Young Money. Now, Young Money Entertainment is a part of Cash Money, and he sued Cash Money and Birdman for $51 million, claiming he didn't get paid. He's looking at them and saying, you guys are not paying us for the albums of Drake, Nicki, and Tyga. That situation was a lot of mess that needed to be cleaned up over the years. And, you know, you just think of where those guys started. I mean, it's only right that there's going to be a lot of gray area over 20 years of hustlers coming out of New Orleans to go on and pretty much keep Universal alive. Man, that boy took out every single breath Drake took, bro. Like, he just, d d d like, he got to the point immediately. I thought he was, like, skipping at first, like, the information, but no, he was just skipping every breath Drake took, bro. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. The editing on that. If you know anything about hip-hop, then you know that Young Money Young is probably Moolah, the baby. biggest record baby. label of all time. Lil Wayne was at the height of his career when For he started the like label. He years. was the last rapper to sell 1 million copies in the first week with his album, The Carter 3. And instead of prioritizing Legendary his own album. megastardom, he stepped back from the spotlight and introduced the world to the biggest rappers today, like Drake, Nicki Minaj, and Tyga. But in 2024, Tyga. you probably wouldn't Rabbi. recognize any of the new Young Money artists. And even though Young Money birthed some of the biggest artists in hip-hop, the downfall of the label was actually a lot darker than you might think. But before we get into the downfall of the label, we've got to understand the foundation it was built on. <coughs> In 2005, nearly all of the original Cash Money members had left the label due to money issues. The last man standing was Lil Wayne who was discovered by Birdman and signed to Cash Money in the early 90s at the young age I think Wayne has been now. I can agree old. now. By 2005, he's still a Wayne legend. was on his way to becoming the biggest rapper in the world. And this is... But Wayne is only mid because he's like, he's kind of old. He's still, he's, you know, he still got his little bops and shit, you know, here and there. But I don't know. He like, I wouldn't say he misses, but he ain't hitting like he used to. You feel me? Like, it, it ain't um, the old feeling with Wayne flicking up lighters and shit. Sometimes you get that little bit, like just a little bit, but... I can't name any new songs that give me that feeling though. Like if you if you know you know drop drop a few let me know. But I don't I don't know. Like I, I don't think Wayne like I don't know. I feel like he mid now too. I I can go for that. I, I think he mid now. Like back then yeah he's still a legend and all that shit. But like I don't know now I don't know he ain't producing nothing crazy. When he created Young Money, the profits of Young I Money heard. were split forty nine percent going to Lil Wayne and 51% going to Birdman and Cash Money. Young Money was a company under Cash Money Records, with Cash Money owning 51% of the profits that Young Money generated. The first artists signed to Young Money were Currency, Boo, Mac Main, and Gutta Gutta. From the original Gutta. Young Money roster, the only rapper who's still somewhat active Gutta, is Gutta, Currency. However, his time at the label was not long, he left shortly after signing, and he only dropped a couple songs on Young Money. When he was asked why he left Lil Wayne's label, Currency said, If I got to Young Money later on, it might have went a different way. But when I was there, I was like, alright, Wayne's trying to make sure he's remembered as the best rapper alive. That does not entail making sure that my music gets where it needs to get to right now. Even though he loves me to death. This is the case with a lot of artists still made industry, it though. right? They sign Young and take the first deal that's thrown at them, even if it's not the best. <coughs> However, before Young Money even started, this seemed to be the case with almost every single artist that was signed to Cash Money. Wayne was the only original Cash Money artist left. The founders of Cash Money, Birdman and his brother Slim, Damn, signed bro. a distribution deal with Universal Records where brothers. they keep 85% of the royalties from all of their music sales. This was unheard of at the time. It meant that Cash Money kept basically all of their artists' profits and Birdman was then responsible for paying each artist what they were owed from their music. This led to many Cash Money artists signing contracts where they Nikki barely saw the, the any profits from their music. The whole label, Juvenile, out. BG, Turk, their main producer, Manny Fresh, they all left cash money and they all had similar reasons for leaving. It was essentially due to Birdman's shady business dealings and his inability to pay artists what they're owed. In the late 90s, Juvenile was the biggest artist on the cash money label and he ended up leaving the label at the height of his career. When he left, he said, my reason to leave cash money is the same reason most artists leave a label, money. 
I'm working like a slave and I'm getting nothing. So I get an entertainment lawyer and found out cash money weren't who they said they were with me. Manny Fresh also said he left the label because of money. And Turk, who was part of the Hot Boys group with Lil Wayne, sued like, for cash real. money for $1.3 million in 2015 for money he was owed from his music. But that was the past, and it didn't really matter because Cash Money still had their biggest superstar, Lil Wayne. It's like to be fair, like why else would anybody like like why? I mean, like there's, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of Diddy reasons you could leave or something, but like other than just like being there, it's like the money ain't good, then get up out of there. You feel me? Like I don't see why Wayne not. actually tried leaving They're the label smart. to sign with Jay Z in two thousand five. Cause it, like the shit did blow up huge. So. <laughs> But him and Jay Z never ended up forming a partnership. I was howling that whole the conversation was a hey. oh that was Lil Wayne saying that shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I thought that was currency, bro. I'm not gonna cap. I was about to start joking, but you know it's okay. It's, it's your boy Weezy. We know where he at now. But him and Jay Z never ended up forming a partnership. I was having that whole the conversation was about me joining Def Jam or the Rockefeller team or whatever. You know, we didn't agree on certain things or, or whatever, whatever the situation was, it didn't work out. And I'm here where I am, but you know, it's all love. Instead, Wayne renegotiated his contract with Burman and Cash Money, and in the same year, they created Young Money. So from 2005 to 2007, most of the original Young Money members had very little success on the label and they quickly left as Wayne's priority was to become the best rapper alive. His popularity grew massively in 2007 and he was constantly being pitched artists who wanted to sign to Young Money. According to Jay Mills, who was one of Young Money's first members, Wayne wasn't actively hunting to sign the next Drake or Nicki Minaj. He was focused on the music, not the business. When asked about Young Money, Jay Mills said, Wayne never really wanted all of us to be like, quote unquote, signed to Young Money. He wanted us to be Young Money, a group, and we do some Wu-Tang stuff and all get deals. I know this sounds crazy, but he never really that wanted us sense. all to be signed to him. He wanted to give us a platform and we go rep Young Money and get deals everywhere, but we're still like this conglomerate. Amarion, another he was original just trying to member bring people of Young on Money, had similar team, thoughts. Bro. He said, so I signed my deal with Young Money. I was supposed to get my advance. And basically, within that time, my check didn't come. And that raised a lot of questions for me, like what type of business was being done? He went on to say, Wayne wasn't like a boss. He was an artist. So now you have Wayne, who's the biggest rapper in the world at the time, and one of the only rappers still signed to the shady Cash Money label. He decides to start his own label under Cash Money. At the time, most of Young Money's artists had no real buzz, so standing next to the biggest rapper in the world was a big look for them. Making great music with the biggest rapper in the game was the main priority. Yeah, but as a result, the finances and business side of things took a backseat and they weren't the biggest focus at the label. Now, the first artist off Young Money who had hits on the charts wasn't actually Drake or Nicki Minaj. Oh, it was Tyga. Nikki. Oh, really? Tyga met Wayne at the 2008 VMA award show and signed to Young Money shortly after. Before signing, he... Hey, bro, let me find out Tyga got one over on Drake, bro. That's funny as hell, bro. Ain't no fucking way. And Nicki, bro? Oh, man. If I was him, bro, I'd be, I'd be bringing out the Grammy for that one, bro, or something. Like, I'd be like, hey, hey, Drizzy, bro. Like, check, check it out, bro. I'd be like, damn, I got, uh, like, look at this one, bro. You ain't got this one. Like, you feel me? That shit would be so funny. He already had an album on the charts and a hit song called Coconut Juice. Even though he I started off as the most shit. successful artist on the... On me, bro. I never heard of that shit, bro. I have never heard of that song in my life. Oh, wow. The label. Yeah, he quickly got overshadowed by the success of Nicki and Drake. But we'll touch on that a bit later. After signing to Young Money, it took Tyga three years to drop his first album on the label. Damn. In 2012, it finally came out. And it actually performed pretty well, selling 68,000 copies in its first week and bad. spawning the hits Rack City and Faded with yeah, Lil Wayne. A City. year later in 2013, he dropped his second album with Young Money. That album didn't perform as well, and it was pretty quiet for Tyga until the end of 2014 when he left a comment That's on Instagram too, my boy. saying, but yeah. the gold album is done. Those are his like, proper songs. holding hostage, so. so I can't release nothing. Might just leak it from That's my pretty much all I really know, too. Maybe it's off. early stuff. When a fan but... asked if he was still on Young Money, he replied, not for long. The president of Young Money, Mac Main, responded to him by saying, don't forget about putting limes in the coconuts. What you rep didn't make you or build you. He's basically implying that before signing <laughs> to Young good. Money, Tyga was making Tired, corny hits, and it was thanks to working with Wayne that he was able to cement himself as a legitimate artist. Now, at the time, it oh, seemed kind of odd that Tyga neighbor. wanted to leave Young Money. He had a decent success. He was one of the only artists along with Drake and Nicki who actually got to release an album while they were on the label. And he actually had hits. But his music got worse and his popularity started to dry up. He also started his getting Kylie Jenner at the time. And he became more known for being with her 
than for his music. Yeah, he, his music got worse and he was dating a 16 year old. So yeah, it was a different time, different time. It was for all these reasons that Young Money wasn't releasing his album, but it was eventually revealed that he also was not getting paid what he was owed. Tiger revealed that he was owed $12 million from Young Money and he actually the paid stuff, them a million not. dollars of his own money to end his contract with the label. After leaving the label, he broke up with Kylie Jenner and he fell off pretty hard. He put out the Gold Album, which was the album that Young Money refused to release, and it only ended up selling 3,000 copies. But fast forward to 2018, and he ended up making the greatest That's comeback sad, of all yo. time with his hit single, Taste. And to this day... That's crazy. He went from 60K... Like, at, a, at his high, you know, to, like, 3K. Like, that's fucking crazy. Like, I'm out of cap. I don't know what his, like, norm was, but, like, I'm not, I'm assuming, like, about half to, like, maybe 40K. And then, uh... And that's not honestly surprising, because I, I thought he honestly was hitting M's. Like, I'm out of cap. I, like, I didn't I didn't listen to him like that, but in all honesty, I thought he was hitting M's, like, like Drake and them. Like, I'm not gonna even lie. I really thought, like, he was like that, but I guess not. That nigga really is that ass. Like, I, I had no idea. I just didn't personally fuck with him like that. But it's crazy to find that out. Like, I thought he was, like, up there. You feel me? But, you know, it is what it is. Like, he's just the worst out of them. But he's still up there, bro. It doesn't matter. Like, he's still up. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. He's still rich. It don't matter. Him and Wayne still make music together. And Tyga actually is dedicated an rich. entire music video to Wayne. Now, Tyga's departure from Young Money was bittersweet. But his career didn't go as bad as some of the other artists on the label. Around the time that Tyga signed to the label in 2008, Wayne was also introduced to Drake, Nicki Minaj, and most of the other members of the label. Aside from the shady business deals, it was Drake and Nicki Minaj's popularity that also played a massive role in the downfall of Young Money. I'll explain that later on in this video, but at the time of being signed, all the Young Money members besides Tyga were on the same playing field. They had no hits, very little buzz, no big albums out, and they were just lucky to be standing next to the best rapper alive. So Wayne signs about 10 artists to Young Money in 2008. In 2009, the group dropped the hit songs Bedrock and Every Girl, along with their group album titled We Are Young Money. Bedrock was the song that really put Nicki Minaj on the map, starting her monstrous feature run, no pun intended, where she ended up getting on the hit songs My Chick Bad by Ludacris, Bottoms Up by Trey Songs, Monster by Kanye, and many more. Drake also went on a crazy feature run after signing to Young Money, which led him to drop his classic mixtape So Far Gone. While this was the beginning of Prosperous for years for artists like Drake and Nicki, it was the beginning of the end for nearly every artist on the label. I mean, if you were following Young Money back in the day, you probably remember Gutta Gutta, T Streets, Corey Guns, Gutta, J Mill, Gutta. Chanel, and the two little kids, Twist and Lil Chucky, who must have been signed when Wayne was sipping some really strong cough medicine. Now, fortunately, none of these artists had much success with their careers at Young Money. Gotta Gotta, J Mills, T Streets, and Chanel had features on a lot of Wayne projects, but they never ended up dropping their own albums. This was probably because what when you're standing go? next to a rapper as talented as Wayne, it's hard to stand out and make a name for yourself. But there were some really dope artists. I ain't gonna lie, if this does well, like, I mean, I've already watched it anyway, but if this does well, like, on YouTube or whatever, like, you know, the Young Money shit, then, like, I'm gonna keep the series going. I wanna know where these niggas went. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Lil Twist, da da da, da. Uh, Lil Chucky especially. I haven't heard of him in a minute. I forgot he was one of them. Uh, and then, like, the rest of them niggas, bro. Like, they really did fall off. Is Drake, Nicki, like, Ty just staying, like, somewhat, I wouldn't say relevant, but, you know, he around. And, like, that's just crazy, because where the rest of them, bro? I didn't even think about that, but I'm not looking at that shit on Young Money, who had a lot of potential, but they also never had an album release. For example, Corey Guns was on the original version of A Millie by Lil Wayne, and he had a feature on Wayne's massive song, Six Foot Seven Foot, which sold over 7 million records. He stood his ground, and you could argue that he rapped as well as Wayne did on those songs. But even with his talent, Corey was never able to put out his own album. In 2020, when Corey Guns' dad was asked about his son signing to Young Money, he said, It's bittersweet because I know how the industry could spit you up. One minute you'll be hot, then not be hot, and I I never want my kids to go through that. I'd rather them have a steady income. Like for instance, where is Corey now? He's got a million songs, he's working, he's still on Young Money, believe it or not. But Corey's such a phenomenal rapper. In my era, Corey would have been a superstar already, but the era we live in, you almost gotta dumb it down somewhat, and he was just never willing to dumb it down to the point where people could all the way get it. Now that could be true for a lot of rappers on Young Money. As we saw with Tyga, if you didn't have a hot song or any sort of popularity at the time, then the label wouldn't want to put your album out. It's unfortunate yeah. because with the right branding, artists like Corey Guns, Jay Mills, and even Chanel could have had prosperous careers. But the label was so busy with Wayne, and later Drake and Nicki, that they didn't invest in the proper marketing for their less popular artists. Maybe it didn't 
didn't seem like it was worth it, since none of them were able to create their own popularity. Now, as for Lil Chucky and Lil Twist, the marketing approach that Young Money took for them was actually pretty interesting. When Wayne was creating Young Money in 2008, Lil Chucky was just 13 years old and Lil Twist was 15. Wayne explained that he Damn, signed these two rappers young. at such a young age because his daughter was a fan of them. He said, anytime my daughter's a fan of you, it means you got stardom. They were both groomed to be the next Lil Wayne. Everything from the way they dressed, the dreads, the cadences in their raps. Wayne said himself that he was going to paint Lil Chucky as the new Lil Wayne. On paper, that sounds like a great idea, right? Let two young kids be mentored by the greatest rapper alive and try to turn them into the next version yeah. of that. But unlike Corey Guns, they couldn't rap nearly as well as Lil Wayne. And unlike Drake, they couldn't make hits the same way Wayne's daughter maybe thought they could. Lil Chucky stayed on the label for about five years and eventually left without putting out a single album or song. In a 2014 interview with Sway in the Morning, when he was asked about his situation with Young Money, Lil Chucky... Bruh, pause. Hold on. Imagine... Bro, hold on. Get, get closer real quick. Get closer, bro. Imagine five years, bro. This nigga didn't drop an album. He didn't drop a song. Like, not a song. Like, I thought he had some songs. Like, I believe he had some features. I'm pretty sure because he had a high-pitched-ass voice. But, like, bro. Like, I didn't, like... He didn't drop a song. B, like, I thought he had a song. Like, no way. I thought he had music. Like, I just didn't... I didn't, like, again, I don't fuck with them niggas, bro. But I thought he had music. That's wild shit, though. Like, you're kidding. Like, the, the dude didn't have a single song out? He rapped, you've been hot and they know it, and still releases they hold it, always had music, labels just wasn't supporting. Guess signing that deal wasn't really all that, after all the boasting. Basically stating that he always had the music, it was always there, but the label just never supported him, they always held back his music, never dropped his albums, okay, and so after all the instant it. gratification and excitement that comes from We're signing to a guy as prolific as Wayne, actually being on his- I, I was gonna say a waste of five years, my boy, like, holy fuck. Like, but all right, so yeah, music. Hopefully, he hopefully he released it at some point on his own. His label probably wasn't what you thought it was when your albums and music just keeps getting delayed. Lil Twist, on the other hand, oh, is boy. actually still signed to Young. It was the Mohawk, he put out bro. a couple singles with Lil Wayne and Busta Rhymes in the early 2010s. Unlike Lil Chucky, at the time he was good friends with Justin Bieber. Now, while Tyga became less known for his music on Young Money and more known for his relationship with Kylie Jenner, Lil Twist suffered from the same effect, Look, where he was time, also though. less known for his music and more known for his relationship with Justin Bieber. This was at a time when Bieber was getting himself into a lot of legal trouble, and Twist claims that Bieber's team made him take drug charges for Justin, because those charges would have negatively impacted Bieber's reputation as a young artist. But for Twist, a couple drug charges wouldn't hurt his brand as badly, since he already rapped about that type of stuff, and he was associated with Lil Wayne. When he was asked about it, Twist said that Bieber had politically correct people around him who can control his life, and I wasn't that guy. I just let him know, you're not a puppet, and he looked up to me and Wayne so much, and that's what they hated. I had control of their cash cow. With TMZ constantly reporting that Twist was getting Bieber into trouble, shit, the two eventually stopped hanging out as much, and Twist was just painted Wayne as the bad guy. No one really cared about his music beyond his association and controversy with Lil oh. Wayne and Justin Bieber. As for Drake, out. it was the absolute complete opposite. Aside from creating music that changed the course of hip-hop, blending R&B and rap in a way that's never been done before, Drake had an extremely clean reputation and people cared more about his music than his affiliation with Wayne or other big artists. According to Lil Twist, Drake met Lil Wayne at the Amelie video shoot and he brought him a portfolio full of headshots from Degrassi, which was the TV show that Drake was Damn, on before he became a rapper. Twist said that from the beginning, Drake was professional and well put together. Wayne flipped through the portfolio that Drake brought him and immediately told his management team to sign Drake. Now, while it's definitely true that Drake Damn. has always been professional, the story of how Wayne signed him is different depending on who you ask. Jazz Prince Jr., the guy who initially found Drake on MySpace, claims that when he first showed Wayne Drake's music, Wheezy said, Jazz, don't ever play this for me again. He sucks. <laughs> Jazz claims that later on he was in the car with Wayne and played him Drake's A Millie remix. Then he played him Drake's song Brand New. When Wayne heard that Drake can rap and sing, that was the moment he wanted to sign him. Wayne found Nicki in a similar way, as he heard her rapping on the Come Up DVD and immediately knew he wanted to sign her. Both Drake and Nicki blew up almost instantly. They dropped mixtapes in 2009, then they both went on insane feature runs where they were out rapping yeah. hip-hop vets like Kanye, Wayne, Bun B, Rick Ross, and more. By for 2010, real. Wayne was sent to prison Insane for eight months, runs. and it was up to Drake and Nicki to make sure Legendary, he was honestly. relevant. While all the other young money artists failed to create a buzz for themselves, Drake and Nicki put out their first albums, with each of them selling over 300,000 copies first week <laughs> and going platinum in that same year. I'm but not gonna lie, imagine being Tiger, bro. Like, like for real, bro. Just like, come here, bro. Just imagine being Tiger, bro. Like, I know that nigga was mad, bro. Like, I know he gotta be high. 300. 
Thou Wow over his 60k, like, tops, bro. And I get it, bro. There's always bigger fish out there, bro. I understand, bro. But, like, you gotta be on fire like that. Like, I don't know. They're, like, they're, them niggas not even releasing your music, bro. But them niggas getting deals left and right. Or they're getting, like, shit thrown out. Like, getting M's for it. Like, I'd be, I'd be hot, bro. Like, people lose, like, uh... That those type of battles every day, bro. But they it ain't over like M's and shit like that. You know, like us casuals. You feel me? Like this is wild, bro. That shit would suck being tiger. But you know what? He's still he's still living good though. It don't even matter as much as the shit that happened to him, bro. He's living good, bro. And copies first week and going platinum in that same year. Yeah, By the time Wayne came out of jail, Drake and Nicki were on top of the world. Tygo was about to put out his first album and Wayne was bigger than ever. But while Young Money's top artists were only getting hotter, this is when the downfall of the label truly began. According to Jay Mills, there was a lot of jealousy between him and the Young Money members. In 2009, they were all small artists and Wayne would bring all of them out to perform at his shows. But now you have Drake and Nicki who are superstars, so they were going out on their own tours, but they weren't bringing the rest of Young Money with them. Damn. Jay Mills said that when Drake did his 2012 tour, he was extremely disappointed because Drake brought out ASAP Rocky, Kendrick, 2 Chains, basically all the biggest artists at the time. Yep. But he didn't think of bringing out Jay Mills or any other Young Money artists. He said, even if we're not hot like that, make us hot. Someone made you hot. To be fair, I was in my feelings, but we were a crew. And in a way, Jay Mills kind of had a point, right? Yeah, Wayne made Drake and Nicki hot. So they could return the favor by putting their spotlight on some of the Young Money artists that they came up with. If you go back to any Drake or Nicki album, you won't see a single Young Money feature besides Tyga on a remix to the motto by Drake. It was obvious that Drake and Nicki were on another level, and the label's focus was on making them bigger, and completely ignoring the careers of the rest of the Young Money artists. By 2014, the animosity amongst Young Money members became even worse. Drake, Nicki, and Tyga were the only artists to release any albums on Young Money. And while Tyga was fighting to leave the label, he did an interview with Vibe Magazine where he said, I don't really get along with Drake. I don't really get along with Nicki. I don't like Drake as a person. He's just fake to me. I think his music is good, but we're all different as people. We were forced together. I try to be cool with everybody, but sometimes everybody just has their own different personality. Chris, Chris when Wayne Brown's was a really superstar, too. all the back. young money artists were standing next to him trying to make a name for themselves. But as Drake and Nicki became bigger than Wayne, it seemed like every young money artist got overshadowed by them and the label didn't see the value in investing into their careers. It's almost like a TV show. You have the main characters and as the show develops, you'll get some background characters who are lucky to have a couple lines throughout the entire series. If those background characters have personalities that stand out, you'll see more of them as the show progresses. So now you have three main actors and seven people in the background who aren't seeing any marketing efforts from their label. They're being overshadowed by superstars and getting no help from anyone around them. But to make it worse, not only were they not getting marketed properly, but they also weren't getting paid properly. By the end of 2014, almost 10 years after Wayne started the Young Money label, he sued Birdman for $51 million, claiming that he was never properly paid for profits from Drake, Nicki, Tyga, and even his own music. Remember how the label wasn't letting Tyga release his gold album? Well, now they weren't letting Wayne, who was once the biggest artist on the label, release his highly anticipated album, The Carter Five. Now, if the boss of the label Damn. isn't getting paid and they won't release his own album, what makes you think they're gonna spend money to put out a Jay Mills project or pay gutta gutta anything? The future of Young Money lied in the hands of Birdman as Wayne fought to end his partnership with Cash Money and began dissing him at his shows. At the time, Birdman was busy turning Young Thug into a superstar, and there were even rumors that Thug and Birdman had someone shoot up Wayne's tour bus after Wayne dissed them. The same way Jay Mills and Tyga had some form of animosity towards Drake's superstardom, it seemed that at this point, in Wayne's... Look, I remember hearing that shit, like them rumors of shit about Wayne, Birdman, and Young Thug, bro. Oh man, I remember hearing that shit back in like, is either middle school or junior high, bro. Like, so young hearing this information, bro. The shootings and shit like that. Like, this shit's so wild, bro. Over, like, music deals and stuff like that. Like, I did... It is it is a lot of money, bro. Like, people die over, like, just change, you know? But it's just, like... It's wild. Like, they're fighting over M's, like, bro. Like, people fight for crumbs, bro. Like, you're fighting over M's, like... Is wild <laughs> career. He may have had a similar form of resentment towards Young Thug's rise in popularity and the mentorship he was getting from Burman. According to Young Thug, when Burman introduced the two artists, Wayne refused to shake Thug's hand. Thug was like the predecessor yeah. that Wayne wanted Lil Chucky and Lil Twist to be. But this is a common theme in the music industry, right? Artists sign bad contracts when they're young and they're desperate, and once their music isn't as hot as it used to be, they don't get promoted or paid by their labels. Jay Mills put it perfectly when he said, I know what it was like to be great and somebody comes around and they are just undeniable. Nikki was undeniable. Drake was undeniable. Let's say there was 10 of us. To hit with three, the way that you hit? Now some people might say, Mills, you're being a little too cordial with that because you weren't one of those three. That's how it Damn. works sometimes. Keep it moving, 
figure it out. That wasn't my first stop on the train, and it's not going to be my last. I knew this wouldn't last forever, and I feel like a lot of people thought it was going to last forever. So to sum it up, Young Money's run was revolutionary, and it changed the sound of hip-hop forever. In the end, Lil Wayne will go down as one of the best rappers of all time, with one of the best labels in music history. But he didn't start Young Money to purely profit off these artists. Instead, it was to help them become as great of an artist as he was. But there's only so much that someone else can do for you. To artists like Nicki Minaj, Drake, and Tyga, they knew that being in Wayne's shadow wouldn't last forever. They needed to make a name for themselves. There's always going to be someone better than you. There's always going to be a bad contract on the table. But it's up to you to work your way out of that and stand out from everyone else. Wayne built a conglomerate that no one else in hip-hop will ever be able to replicate. And out of 10 artists, to hit on three the way that he hit, that's some pretty incredible shit. Let me know. Now, I would say that no one being able to replicate that, I would not say that's, uh, that's untrue. I definitely feel like it can be replicated. Like, I'm not saying, like, I know, like, a group that will or anything, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like it definitely can be replicated. I won't say it's impossible. It's definitely something that could be done.